The president has accepted the request made by Luhan Rathwatha to step down from his portfolio of state minister of prisons amid multiple allegations leveled against him over incidents of unruly behavior at the Valikada and Andhradhapura prisons. Now, in this context, local and international organizations as well as political parties have expressed serious concern over the callous disregard for the rights of prisoners, calling on the authorities to launch a credible investigation into the incident instead of allowing the matter to be diluted following the state minister's resignation. Over the past few days, reports emerged of an incident where a group, including a state minister, who arrived on the 6th of September at the Valikada prison and at the Anuradhapura prison on the 12th of September on a helicopter, engaged in an act of intimidating remand prisoners. When news first reached out to the Department of Prisons to confirm the veracity of the claims, it said a commissioner has been assigned to Anuradhapura in order to probe the matter. As a practice of the Civil Aviation Authority, internal flights do not operate at night owing to the current situation in the country. Chairman of the Civil Aviation Authority, Upul Dharmadasa, said it was done to avoid unnecessary risks. Further, internal flight operations under the purview of the CAA are only conducted between the Jaffna, Batiklo and Ratmalana airports. In such a context, it would have been a private aircraft that took wing to Anuradhapura. Media spokesperson of the Sri Lanka Air Force, Group Captain Dushan Vijay Singha, speaking to News First revealed, helicopters of the Sri Lanka Air Force do not operate during the night and at present only provides its services to the President or Prime Minister based on necessity. Hence, the question that cries out for an answer is this. Can an inebriated individual pilot an aircraft? In this regard, the Civil Aviation Authority states that it does not conduct field sobriety tests but would not render its services if it is observed that an individual is excessively intoxicated. Nonetheless, many quarters claim the state minister had in fact flown to Anuradhapura on a helicopter. What transpired within the prison? Multiple entities, including parliamentarian Gajendra Kumar Ponnambalam, revealed further details on the matter. The state minister of prisons had gone to the Andhradhapura prisons on the 12th evening, had entered the prisons and had insisted on the PTA Tamil political prisoners to be brought to him. And when they were brought to him, he got two of those prisoners to kneel and had gone on to point his personal firearm at their head and body and had threatened to kill them on the spot. There is a broad discourse at the Human Rights Council on the Prevention of Terrorism Act. The minister has threatened prisoners who were arrested under the PTA. It has become a pastime of our ministers now to push our country towards more chaos. We are left to question if this is the national security plan of Gotabe Rajapaksa. The UNHRC sessions are ongoing in Geneva with many allegations being levelled against the country. Instead of responding to those allegations, we are providing them with further evidence to substantiate their claims. Only one law should exist in the country. So they said, where is the law now? It is against such a backdrop that Lohan Ratwatha appealed for the president to issue a recommendation on the possibility of him stepping down from his portfolio. Thereafter, Lohan Ratwatha resigned from the post of State Minister of Prison Reforms and Prisons Rehabilitation pursuant to the president accepting his request. However, it has not been revealed whether he has resigned from the post of State Minister of Gem and Jewellery Related Industries. Issuing a tweet on the matter, leader of the opposition, Sajid Premadasa, claims the unlawful act amply exemplifies the anarchical situation that exists in our country, urging the State Minister to step down immediately. Multiple organizations as well as political parties have urged authorities to enact the law on the matter instead of concealing the matter following the state minister's resignation. Prisons officers have also allowed for the minister to act in an unruly manner while being intoxicated. We received information yesterday that an attempt is being made to delete CCTV footage at the Anuradhapura prison. If the state minister believes he can enter the prison flaunting political office, he is mistaken. A parliamentarian is only allowed to enter a prison between 5.30 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Did this person abide by that law?
The ideal person has been handed the task of managing prisoners. This person should be rehabilitated first. They used to say Gotabe Rajapaksa will leave no room for unruly acts. But Lohan Ratwatta has done exactly that. What steps have been taken by the president on this incident was a disciplinary inquiry launched in the least. Regardless of his resignation, the government's policy on parliamentarians acting in such a shameful manner must be elaborated. Releasing a statement on this incident, the Centre for Policy Alternatives calls for the authorities to initiate a credible investigation into the incident and action taken without fear or favour. The CPA in its statement says these incidents have occurred while Sri Lanka's human rights record is being discussed at the ongoing 48th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council. It notes, quote, inability at this critical juncture to take swift and firm action related to these two incidents, among many others, will send a clear message that the government of Sri Lanka has no genuine intention of following through with its own statements and further reinforce reports by victims and civil society of the repressive climate and impunity in Sri Lanka, end quote.